Good morning friends, today we are going to discuss about some detail part of uh, an operation of metal forming that is called rolling. This is a very important one. The reason is a lot of products, lot of products are coming out of those rolling activities where two cylindrical rolls are rotated in opposite direction and on the basis of that we can produce the different components either of shape rolling or reduction or calibrating form of operation. So this is the rolling, this is the side view of flat rolling, flat rolling that means the slab is fed or the bloom is fed and we are getting some reduced diameter because of the squeezing pressure from the rolls and they are responsible for pressing that to come out of uh, these uh, size reduction permanently plastic deformation and that is happening and uh, the frictional force between the roll and the um, input material and that is acting as a pulling one. So, we do not require any kind of pulling or pushing arrangement in order to flow that and this is the side view of flat rolling indicating before and after thickness. So, initial thickness was T suffix O, T suffix O that is T original that is the original thickness and after that it will be converted to T suffix F that is the final one. So, before and after thicknesses, work velocities, angle of contact with rolls and other features are associated with and according to that we can produce those activity related to rolling. And there are some angles that is the, the bite or the angle where it is in touch in these contact with those uh, roll, uh, these input material and that is called theta and roll radius is R and this P is the roll pressure and L is the contact length wherever the roll is adhered to the surfaces of all those material input there and that is called the contact length. So, these parameters are important and it is initial velocity of entering is velocity original, velocity final and that way roll speed is dependent in both the cases it is the same, but it is rotating in the opposite direction of two rolls that is V suffix R and that way the rolling activity is taking place and outcome will be this reduced plastic deformed part. Now, we come out in the to the problem. Why the problems are there? The significance of the problem is that we can get a pragmatic approach of what uh, can be the pragmatic uh, practicing diameters of the different roles and how the strips, what are the size reductions, what are the other kind of terms are responsible for the rolling activity important for the process control parameters. Then what are the other material behavior pattern we have to know so that we can calculate the exactly the rolling forces and we can design all those keeping in mind all those rolling forces in order to make those machines and what are the demands for those machines, their rigidity and other kind of demands associated with that. So, the, all those things we can definitely get through from those numerical problems and once we can solve those numerical problems, a very good understanding of the situation mathematically tangibly will be there and as it is of a realistic thing, as it is a pragmatic thing, it is easy for us to retain those information, to appreciate those information and that is why the engineering subjects are always associated with mathematics and representation and even in the examinations also the problems are asked in different examination gate and engineering, engineering services examination so that the, it can easily test the depth of understanding of all those pragmatic process tangibly from the participating candidates. So, that is why understanding of problems are important and that is why we are discussing also a realistic representative problem related to shoaling activity. So, a 300 millimeter wide strip, 300 millimeter wide strip, 25 millimeter thickness. So, it is quite long in terms of wide and thickness is near about 25 and it is fed through a rolling mill to powered rolls. These are all two powered separately powered rolls and each of radius 250 millimeter. 250 millimeter is the roll of the radius and the work is 
the war thickness is to be reduced from 25 millimeter to 22 millimeter in one pass. Why it is a one pass? Because in multi pass rolling activity is there. So, in case of each rolling activity, we have to know the what is the individual pass or reduction in one pass and at a roll speed of 50 revolution per minute. All those rolls equal but opposite direction it is rolling at 50 revolutions per minute. And the work material has a flow curve defined by that uh, flow curve as a typical equation and where that is uh, multiplied with a constant and some exponent. The, so, that constant k is uh, has a flow curve defined by k it is represented in megapascal. So, k is equal to 275 megapascal and the exponent is 0 0.15 and the coefficient of friction between the rolls and the work is assumed to be 0 0.12. 0 0.12 that is the uh, coefficient of friction and what we have to determine? We have to determine if the friction is sufficient if it is enough to permit the rolling operation to be accomplished. If so, uh, it is if it is possible, we have to calculate the roll force, the torque and the horsepower. Roll force to design the machine and the rotating force value is the torque and it can be converted to horsepower in order to a very good measure in order to power requirement of the entire situation. We have to determine the roll force, the torque and the horsepower. So, there is some limit. We cannot go for infinite reduction through rolls. So, there is some limit and that limit is defined by some representative uh, pragmatic e handy equation. And this is limit to the maximum possible draft that can be accomplished in flat rolling with a given coefficient of friction. Frictional coefficient is important. We have to know the frictional coefficient and that will determine the reduction and this reduction and other things are associated with the value of this d max draft this is called draft what is the maximum reduction with those depending on the friction coefficient of friction what we can determine so that d max is equal to mu square r mu is the frictional coefficient and r is the roll radius so d max draft max draft in millimeter and m is a uh, mu is the coefficient of friction. So, d max is equal to mu square r and r is equal to the roll radius. So, we have to know the roll radius and we have to know the friction coefficient of friction in order to determine the maximum draft. So, the equation indicates that if friction force is 0, there will be impossible to accomplish obviously, because if there is no friction. So, there is no reduction. Reduction only possible if there is a friction and that means the material, the raw material is adhered to the surface of that thing because of the friction and some kind of pulling activity is implemented and then and then only it is possible to reduce the diameter. So, we need friction. And this is the contact length whatever we have seen in the in the title slide that what is contact length here you will find it out the contact length that, that length of the roll which is adhered to the surface in, in contact. So, that is why it is known as contact length and that has to be determined how it is to be determined by a simple formula root over L contact length is defined by L root over of R into T 0 minus T f that is in bracket and that is the draft r into draft it is under the product of that and it is under the square root. So, L is equal to contact length in either in millimeter or inch roll radius millimeter or inch T 0 that is T o that is original thickness millimeter or inch T final that is either millimeter or in inch and with those things we can determine the contact length. So, in order to do the solutions first we have to find it out what the draft is attempted. First we have to find it out whatever draft is attempted it is really feasible or not and with that formula d max is equal to mu square r we can find it out the maximum draft possible and there we find it out here d max 0 0.12, 0 0.12 square that is the mu value and 250 is the roll radius. So, maximum draft is 3.6 and here we are getting we are reducing in 3 millimeters. So, 3 is less than 3.6. 
so definitely we can do that routing operation because 3 is less than 3.6 maximum drop possible this is the first information and first calculation and the second one is we have to find it out the contact length and contact length is as per the formula we put those roll radius and the draft and square root of it and we find it out that contact length will be 27.4 millimeter so contact length is determined now we are finding it out the the flow stress average flow stress the bar is there so flow stress we have to determine the flow stress and it is easy the strain is is equal to epsilon is equal to ln divided by the initial uh, initial thickness divided by the final thickness initial thickness is 25 final is 22 so ln is comes out to be point, 0.128 25 by 22 and logarithm of it 0.128 and the formula ya formula that is a flow stress formula is very very straightforward that is the k into epsilon to the power n divided by 1 plus n so what is n here 0.15 so what is k 275 megapascal and that is multiplied by the epsilon epsilon what is that 0.128 and that has to be power raised 0.15 and divided by 1 plus 1 1 plus 0.15 and if we do the calculations uh, it will come out as 175.7 megapascal so flow stress is easily determined flow stress formula we put the value of k we put the value of n and we put the on the basis of that we can arrive at an epsilon that is the strain it is already known from there itself we calculate this original thickness by final thickness taking the logarithm of it and we are coming out of those low stress value determination so the rolling force becomes rolling force becomes the flow stress average flow stress into width into length flow stress into width into length and on the basis of that we can find it out the low stress and uh, the product of this uh, width and length is the roll work contact area because length is the contact length and the roll area lay, uh, width and that will determine the contact area that area is in contact is in adhere to these roll surfaces of the work material whenever we are just rolling it down and the power and torque power and torque is also not uh, very difficult to determine the power will be 2 into pi into n that is the rpm into f into l so where p is equal to power and that is expressed in joules per second or watt n is equal to the rotational speed uh, cycles per uh, second the revolution per minute and if is equal to rolling force and L is equal to contact area and from there itself we can find it out T is equal to 0.5 into F into L. So power and torque can be easily determined from those formula. And the rolling force is given by very simple rolling force that will be coming from that formula it is 2 into pi into and that formula we found it out that 175.7 that we have obtained from the average flow stress average flow stress we are getting that thing and the 300 is the width from there itself and contact length 27.4 so rolling force we found it out 1,444,786 newton i repeat f is equal to 175.7 that is the flow stress and 300 is the width and 27.4 is the contact length and we multiplied that we got the rolling formula and from there itself we can easily get the torque torque is 0.5 into f into l and that we got it uh, with those values putting there itself f we got it l we got it and torque and with those newton millimeter to meter and that way we can get the torque and the torque is coming as 19786 newton meter uh, so we are getting that talk related to that and power power is given by power is given by the formula of that thing with 2 pi into all those values whatever we have seen there itself that is the power 2 pi into n into f into l so we are putting all those things 2 pi into uh, all those values of uh, those forces 
and then contact length along with those 10 to the power minus 3 component and we can get those values near about that and we can convert that meter per minute into the meter per second uh, the newton meter per newton meter per minute into newton meter per second that is what and that is divided by 745.7 and we can get the horsepower so from there itself we can deduce the horsepower why horsepower because motors and other things are a standard standard uh, designations of all those things related to their horsepower so we have to know the horsepower we have to know the rolling force and from there itself we can know what is the torque related to that and from the torque itself and the power we get those rolling forces and all those things putting into that into the contact length we can get the power and those powers is converted into newton meter per second or watt and whenever we convert that watt and other things with those 745.7 we get the horsepower and horsepower is associated with the uh, representation of those motors so it will enable us to go for the selection of the appropriate motors with the appropriate designation of the horsepower and that is absolutely important for designing the right kind of forces the right kind of forces related to those uh, related to those uh, formations of those machines where we have to decide and select the appropriate motors in order to run it very efficiently and whatever the requirement it should meet the power requirement uh, possible so in order to design and select those motors we know we have to know the horsepower because in the market we need those motors we have those motors in terms of horsepower so we have to purchase and select those motors and fit with that machine where the appropriate horsepowers can be delivered Thank you very much for your patient listening. We have gone to those detailed part of all those rolling activity related numerical problems and that will enable people, the students who are going through that to understand the rolling force and calculate and solve those problems if it is offered in the examination. Thank you.